Welcome to the EKG Guy if this is your first time. I'm glad you're joining us and welcome back if you're returning. We're walking through and going through our EKG coding reference guide that is now available online. So you can go to this link here if you want access, enter your email address, click submit, and from there you'll get an email and make sure to confirm it with a link, okay? And then you'll have access. You'll just have to do that the first time and then you can log in simply, okay? So we are now here in part eight, okay, of the clinical disorders. We are going to look at dextrocardia today. So that's what we're gonna look at in this lecture. If you want to go back and look at the rhythms, the P wave abnormalities, we looked at atrial enlargement, different types of AV conduction delays, interventricular conduction, MIs, different type of ischemia, whether it's old or acute, so learning how to do that. And then ST segment changes, and here in the clinical disorder. So let's get uh, to it. And then another thing I want to point out is if you want our course, which is much more detailed, uh, and that's over about 30 hours of video separate from this with books and calipers and so much more, um, and you'll get a print of this EKG coding reference guide uh, as well, you have to go to www.ekg.md and then go up to here to the EKG course and you will be able to have access there and check that out, okay? Uh, this is what we use to teach our students uh, here at Mayo Clinic. Uh, a number of programs are using it and um, we're now offering it to those outside. So take a look if you're interested, you can check that out. But let's get started here. So dextrocardia, what is this? Well, this is when we have almost an inversion or now the heart is shifted to the right side okay so normally the heart sits in the chest and it's directed inferior and leftward just as actually the axis and how the conduction in the heart flows okay now in this case it's now sitting slightly tilted to the right okay so you almost have an inversion of all the conduction system and as a result we see different changes on the ekg so what can we expect to see in dextrocardia okay um, well, what you want to note here is that the P wave, as well as the QRS complex, and the T waves are inverted. They're inverted, they're upside down in the lateral limb lead. So here's one, here's AVL, and notice that your P wave, okay, P waves are negative. Same thing with your QRS complex, okay, I'll use a different color. Your QRS complexes, and notice they're negative as well in these leads and then your T waves as well. So the T waves are negative here as well. That's the lateral limb leads, one in AVL, okay? And the other thing you want to note is that there is reverse R wave progression, okay? So what does R wave progression mean? So R wave progression. This is something that you should uh, be aware of. And we tend to look at this from V1 all the way up to V5, so V2, V3, V4, and V5, okay? So let's first look at normal R wave progression. We go through this in our course, but let's take a look at this here. So normal R wave progression from V1 to V5, we should see an uh, increase in the R wave and decrease in the S wave amplitude. So here's your R wave and here's your S wave. We should see the R wave get bigger as we go from the right side to the left side. Okay, because the left ventricle normally sits more leftward. And we actually see the opposite in dextrocardia, but let's just see, this is a normal. So again, your R wave should get bigger, your S wave smaller, okay? R wave bigger, S wave smaller, R wave bigger, S wave smaller. Okay, to the point that maybe there's no S wave. So notice that the R wave is slowly increasing in amplitude and the S wave decreases in amplitude, almost like going up stairs, okay? So notice your stairs. Now, when we talk about reverse R wave progression, you can pretty much expect to see the opposite, okay? So in other words, imagine this is V1, V2, V3, V4, and V5, okay? And that's pretty much what happens in dextrocardia. Now you have the reverse. The left ventricle is more rightward on the right side of the patient. And so everything is gonna be going in the opposite direction. So you'll be moving in this direction. So your R waves 
we should see uh, what there is is a decrease in the amplitude as we go from V1 to V5, okay? Meaning that the biggest R wave should in, be in V1, okay? And the smallest R wave here in V5 as we move uh, from the right to left, okay? Um, so let's look at here. So here's V1, notice here's your R wave, okay? V2, this is your R wave, V3, your R wave, okay? V4, your R wave, and V5, the R wave, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. R waves are the first positive deflection of um, the QRS complex, where S waves are the first negative deflection that follow a R wave. So they come after. If you have a negative deflection before an R wave, we call those Q waves, okay? So here we are at that. Another thing you should note is that normal R wave progression has an increase in the R to S ratio. Okay, so that's another way you can think of it. The R wave goes up and the S wave goes down. That's why the R to S ratio increases. If we had the reverse, so reverse of the R wave progression, we should see from right to left, okay, that we have actually the opposite. We have a decrease in the R to S ratio because the S wave uh, is getting increasing in amplitude, okay, and this should be decreasing. So let's look here. So R wave here, this is the S wave, these negative deflections, okay, here's another S wave, your S wave, S wave and S wave. Okay, so notice that the R to S ratio or the R waves are decreasing in amplitude as the S waves are increasing in, in amplitude. Okay, or at least that ratio of them. Okay, so hopefully that is making sense. And what we want to see is that the R wave amplitude is the greatest in V1, okay, and gets progressively smaller as we move to V6. So here's the R wave and it's getting smaller, at least the ratio as we move through there. Now, one thing you want to note is that lead reversal can give a similar appearance of dextrocardia in the limb leads. However, the reverse R wave progression does not exist in limb lead reversal, and that's what differentiates it. So hopefully that makes sense. Again, look for the inversion of the P wave, QRS complex, and T wave in the lateral limb leads, as well as the reverse R wave progression for dextrocardia. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. Now, just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available, so again, if you go to our website, www.ekg.md, okay, so this is our website, and what you'll notice is that if you go to the EKG course here, okay, you'll find stuff that's separate. So notice that we have a number of topics, practice material, lectures, a way for you to contribute, and this is the course here over here. So you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so, and that's more on YouTube. There's another 100, more than 100, about 200 videos that are available with the course. So those are separate videos. And this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter. Okay, so completely separate from what you're getting online for free. Okay, these are um, course material that comes with it. So notice that you have a book Okay, and then you also have the pocket guide available. So you can choose which format. They are the same thing, both these uh, book and the pocket guide, uh, different formats. Uh, I really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go. Now with the book, you also get videos. So notice these are the videos, okay? And these are a video for every single page in that book. So it's over 30 hours of video. Now there's a number of practice material that I continue to upload there. Okay, we'll have practice questions coming soon. Uh, so all of that's available. Again, this is separate from all the free material that you get already. Okay, so this is more high yield stuff. This is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at Mayo Clinic. And it's used now among many institutions. So use, uh, check that out. Now, what it also includes are calipers. So yes, you get calipers with this course, okay? Um, I don't know anyone else that offers that, but you do get calipers. I think they're very helpful and they can, uh, you know, if you know how to use them correctly, uh, can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on, okay? And then you also get our pocket, EKG reference, 
Okay, this was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows. Uh, and this is really nice. It has every code, as you saw earlier, laid out there. Very small pocket guide available. I had help with uh, my colleague, Dr. Peter Noseworthy, who is the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic, in editing it. So this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful. So go to the EKG course. You'll see examples of lectures, okay, why we developed this, okay. A lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning EKGs, having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and, you know, still struggling. So uh, my struggle is a struggle that I don't want you to have in learning them, okay. You can read all those introductory books, but honestly, they are not uh, enough, okay. And you find yourself using other resources, which is part of the learning process. I wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what I struggled with going and learning through EKG. So again, from beginner to advanced level with this course, uh, you get the book, the calipers, the coding reference, video access, okay? And now we're offering 25% off. 25% off, put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself um, 25% off that will even, it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material. So uh, we don't really make much off it. It's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care. That's why we do this and we love doing it. So thank you so much for your support. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them below and we're happy to answer them. All right. Have a great day.